G'day everyone, Lucktorse here and welcome to another episode of Tech Update, where I take a look at the highlights of additions, changes and fixes that arrive with the latest Warframe update or hotfix. And today I'll be taking a look at PC Hotfix 26.0.7, which introduces a new room to build in your clan's dojo, defiled mod transmutation, buffs to certain critical chance melee mods, and heaps more. So let's dive straight into it now. First up, let's take a look at some changes and fixes for melee 3.0 phase two. All right, so general changes include the following. For the UI, DE split heavy attack stats in into their own category to better organize the various stats associated with all melee weapons. Now hold melee will now perform heavy attack like it did before phase two. They've removed combo hit multiplier with glaives hit damage. Only explosive damage will use the combo multiplier. And Majorize rising blast can now be held versus tapped for either a charged or uncharged shot. Now there's also been some pretty solid mod changes with true steel getting bumped up from 60% to 100%. 120% critical chance with two times for heavy attack at max rank. And Sacrificial Steel got bumped up from 88% to 220% crit chance with two times for heavy attack at max rank. Next up, let's move on to stance and weapon changes with Crimson Dervish getting its sliding heavy attack fixed. And they increase the damage and combo point value of Crimson Dervish's neutral twisting flurry and forward plus block coiling impale combos. Onto Gunblade now, and they added a free movement shooting attack to the first move in the forward combo for High Noon in Vagabond Blitz and Bullet Dance Magnum Magnum. The heavy attack shot is no longer free movement, the wind up remains free movement though. For High Noon, the neutral combo of Desperado Zeal is now tactical forward combo, final showdown, and vice versa. They've also switched the order of the two tactical forward attacks and increased the forward distance of the first attack. For Bullet Dance, they moved the first attack of the neutral combo, Samba Slash, to the end of the combo chain. And neutral combo of Samba Slash is now neutral block, automatic rumba, and vice versa. And for the Volpine Mask, they swapped the order of the first two attacks in the neutral combo, Assailant Guys. For the Nunchaku stance, Atlantis Falcon, they've decreased the forward movement of the first attack in the tactical forward combo, Blazing Vortex, and increased it in the second. For Wise Razor, the second attack in forward combo, Cut Thrice, is now free movement. The last attack in the neutral combo, Threshing Grain, is now the first attack. Damage multipliers and combo points adjusted accordingly. And the last attack attack in the tactical forward combo, Calling Thunder, is now the first attack with increased gap closing movement, damage multipliers, and combo points adjusted accordingly. For the Dark Split Sword Heavy Blade, they've increased critical chance from 10% to 15%, they increased puncher damage from 68 to 78, and finally for the Xenostar, they've applied a combo multiplier to Disc Recall Explosion. On to melee general fixes now, and they fixed Blood Rush and Weeping Wounds resetting when using a normal attack on gun blades. They fixed Exodia Valor, considering every target to be lifted, whether they actually are or not. And DE fix Xenorix in a might not applying correctly. All right, so that's the main highlights of further changes and fixes for Melee 3.0 Phase 2 for this particular hotfix. Now let's move the conversation onto the Kuvalich side of things, and there are additions, changes, and fixes to go through, so let's look at the highlights now. First up, D, you've introduced a new room for your clan's dojo, the Crimson Branch, where you'll be able to trade converted Kuvaliches. That's right, you're now able to trade a converted Kuvalich with another player. Now look, just as a heads up, you'll only be able to trade your Lich with one player only. It can't be then on traded to another player, then onto another player, and so on. So basically, the Kuvalich that you have, it only has one trade life in it. And once that's done, that's it. There's no more trades for that particular Kuvalich at all. And DE also mentioned that the new Crimson Branch room will scale up and grow with further entries in the system when other factions eventually join the Lich system. And for back-to-back -back duplicates, your Kuvalich will no longer have the same weapon twice in a row. Now, while you may get a duplicated weapon, you know, in the future, a couple of Liches down the track, your Kuvalich will have a guaranteed different weapon than the immediate one you got previously. And another great aspect that has been introduced is you'll be able to transmute four defiled requiem mods. So four defiled requiem mods can now be transmuted into a random fully charged requiem mod. On to our next one now, and this one is another cracker I really like. Void Fisher missions will now appear on all Kuva Fortress nodes. Previously only 
rescue and survival missions on the Kuva Fortress were eligible due to other missions having an Arcwing restriction. Now the whole fortress is eligible. And look, I love this change. The more people that can experience the wonderfulness that is Koro and its assault map, the better. It's such a great node. Hopefully we see more assault maps across the star chart one day in pretty much in general. And our next one is apparently a bug that's now been turned into a feature. Ephemeris obtained from a Kuva Lich can now be equipped on Sentinels and Companions. For effect's sake, this will be a slightly subdued version of the selected Ephemera. Non-Lich Ephemera functionality is apparently in the works. Now DE also mentioned that they increased the chance of your Kuva Lich to have an Ephemera from 5% to 10%. Newly birthed Liches will have the 10% chance, while existing Liches will still be at 5%. Old Liches that are traded and reactivated will also be at 5% as well. Now it's good to see we've got the, the published stats for the Kuva Lich Ephemeras. How do you feel about a 10% chance of that happening though? Make sure you let me know in the comment section below. But they've also mentioned they added new Parazon finishes for you to stabby stabby the baddies with. Look, I did a run earlier with Ember before putting this video together and it's as if the Mercy animations have been slowed from their brisker pace prior to 26.0.7. I preferred the faster animation prior to this hotfix where it was a great balance of epic takedown which, uh, which also then got you quickly back into the fight. But now it kind of feels a slower Darth Vader Obi-Wan Kenobi style of a fight that, you know, in a Warframe Mercy type of takedown, if you catch my drift. And here's a nice little change where they've added a Kuvalich icon beside star chart regions and nodes that are under the influence of a Kuvalich to address colorblind concerns regarding the Kuva stain. They've apparently fixed Kuva Siphon and Flood Rescue missions, not giving out a Requiem Relic at the end of the mission if you completed the mission without setting off the alarms. And they've also fixed Kuva Siphon and Flood Spy missions, not giving rewards for cracking the spy vaults. And next up, this is a pretty funny one. Converted Kuvalich allies will no longer spawn in Arcwing missions as they ignore the complete lack of oxygen and requirements that were actually needed to fly. And wrapping up the Kuvalich side of things, their fixed client throws occurring in the wrong direction. Moving on now, and there's been a change for launcher area of effect damage. And that is there is now a separate stat with its own header in the arsenal and AOE damage radius is also now displayed. Previously, AOE damage values were merged with regular on hit damage values. And for general changes, Changes now they've adjusted the density of Ember's ability effects on nearby hits. Now let's move on to the general fix highlights for PC Hotfix 26.0.7 which included the following. They fixed Requiem Relics not counting towards Unlock Relics Nightwave Axe. They've fixed another case of the Vasca Curative not working curing infected Kavats. DE fixed issues with enemy navigation in the Grenier Galleon. They fixed an issue where the Corpus Hacking minigame would lock up if another player starts it right while you finish. They fixed the polarized screen not displaying the correct max rank of weapons that go over 30, which included the likes of the Paracesis and Kuva weapons. And finally, DE fixed the inability to see what players are selling in Maru's Bazaar. So that's it for the highlights of additions, changes, and fixes that arrived with PC Hotfix 26.0.7. And look, as these were the highlights, if you want to read through the full patch notes yourself, you can find a link to them in the video description below. And that brings us to the end of another TAC update video, and thank you you very much for watching. Make sure to let me know what your thoughts are on what was covered during this video by leaving a comment in the comments section below. Also, while you're here, make sure to press that subscribe button for my YouTube channel and have alerts switched on so you know when my next video is going up for viewing. Also, it'd be awesome if you press the like button too, if you found the video informative or you just simply enjoyed it. And you'll also be able to find links to my Twitch channel, Twitter and Facebook pages in the video description below. And I hope you're having a blast in Warframe, whatever it is that you're getting up to. Cheers.